Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Stairton Academic Principal, Benign Claims of Teacher Misconduct. Principal of the Stairton Academy in St. Anne, Omar Mongol, has denied that teachers have been sent on leave over allegations of academic misconduct at the institution. Allegations are that several breaches took place during last year's sitting of the Caribbean Secondary Education Certificate CSEC examinations. The alleged breaches reportedly occurred during the sitting of the mathematics and music exams. An investigation into the matter is currently underway, but Mongol told reporters that no teacher has been sent on leave in connection with the matter. Mongol said a routine Prince teachers meeting was held where the allegations were discussed. Principal of Stereton Academy Omar Mongol, classes at the institution are set to resume on January 9. Stereton Academy has over 1,180 students. There is no truth to the matter. We would have been improving over the years, and we took a slight increase in 2021. And this year we made a concerted effort to improve in some areas. So we would have worked hard to remove, to turn those threes that we normally get into twos and to transform the twos into ones. To the best of my knowledge, no one has been sent on leave. In the meeting, the matter came up about the story that came out regarding the allegations. And we had a brief discussion on the matter. And um, parents are of the view that it is totally fabricated, nothing truthful there. And they have all faith in the institution in continuing to educate their children. We do expect that come January 9th, our students will be out in their numbers to continue their education. And our teachers will continue to provide quality education to our students. Speaking with reporters, President of the School Spring Teachers Association, Maxine Green Butler, said she is unaware of Mr. Mongol being expected to go on leave. She said when some PTA members learned of the report in a PTA meeting on Thursday, they voiced their support for the principal. She said Thursday's PTA meeting was not in response to the report, but was simply a regular meeting before the resumption of the new school term. Same way the parents are getting their information and their reply to the information is that if the principal is not there, there will not be no school. This thing is out in the media, sir, and he has not gotten a letter from nobody to say, sir, you are to go and leave. He has not gotten a letter, he's not on leave. It was our regular PTA meeting where I give out prizes for the first father, the first mother. I had some trophies and some awards for, to, for, for parents and I handed those out. We had our regular PTA meeting today, sir. Anything come up would be matters arising, just as any other meeting. But we did not have this meeting because of and he will be at school on Monday. School will be keeping on Monday. JCF spokesman condemns reckless behavior. Senior communication strategist with the Jamaica Constabulary Force JCF Dennis Brooks has condemned the reckless behavior of few people who continue to celebrate the new year by firing their lives and firearms in the air. According to Brooks, at least four people, including an elderly woman asleep in her bed, were injured as a result of illegal New Year's gun salutes. Brooks said that personal responsibility must be exercised as this reckless act has seemingly become the norm each year. Every year you talk and every year it's the same thing, and yet, it's always someone else's problem to fix, he said. Brooks condemnations follow an incident at the New Year's Eve party in Western Jamaica that resulted in a patron being injured. The patron, a 37-year-old man who requested not to be named, stated that both he and his wife were excited to attend the event, though he would usually ring in the New Year at a watch night service at church. He said, while the countdown in midnight was taking place, he felt something hit him on his leg. It felt like somebody forcefully threw a stone and I bent down to rub the arrow. I remember saying that this no feel right and my legs started to feel funny, he told reporters. My wife started rubbing it for me. She then turned on the flashlight on her phone and that's when we realized there was blood. I had on jeans pants so the blood was sweeping through and I started shopping, trying to get back to the vehicle. At that time, I didn't know that I had gotten shot. It was when we stopped again and look at the pants, I saw a hole, I figured at the time that I must have gotten shot. The couple drove to a private medical facility and was towed to the hospital where a doctor confirmed that he was shot in the back of the knee. I did the x-ray and the doctor confirmed that there was a bullet in the leg, but luckily it didn't fracture any bone 
and no major veins were hit. She said that I was lucky, he stated. He told reporters that he's expecting to have surgery soon to remove the bullet. Though disappointed, the man is grateful. It could have been worse, so I am giving thanks for my life. I am happy that the bone was not shattered at the kneecap because that would have been a different situation. I would have probably not been able to walk properly, he told reporters. I will be fine. I am not feeling any pain now because of the painkillers, but there's a little swelling around the era, he added. Costas encourages citizens to seek professional help. Costas of Manchester Garfield Green is appealing to citizens to seek professional help to avoid domestic disputes escalating to violence following Tuesday's suspected murder-suicide involving a Mandeville couple. Let us see how we can talk about things and just settle them. Let us see how we can deal with things in an amicable way and sometimes we refuse to seek help. Let us ask for help no matter what, no matter the circumstances, the situation, no matter how old we are. There are opportunities there for us to get help, he told reporters on Wednesday. Find someone who we can talk to in confidence, but I would say seek help from people who are actually to help you, not just anybody. Seek help from people who you know have the confidence in, who will keep your business a secret, who will guide you properly, he added. Keith and Stephanie Ellis, both in their 40s, were found dead at their home on Bonita Crescent in Mandeville mid-afternoon Tuesday after a missing person's report was filed with the police. The wife, a bank employee, was found with wound to her forehead inside the house and the husband, otherwise called Ricky, a former taxi operator, was found hanging from the scaffold of the back of the property. A police source said a crowbar, believed to be the murder weapon, was found at the scene. A senior police source said officers went to the couple's home where they found the couple dead. Relatives told reporters the couple was going through a divorce. Green, who in previous years set up a domestic violence and suicide prevention helpline, condemned the murder-suicide. Whatever it is, it is not worth taking anyone's life, and it must be because of something that went wrong, maybe out of rage, out of anger, he said. In the meantime, Green added that the discovery of 52-year-old Altia Rowe and her son, 35-year-old Clayton Palmer, which what appeared to be contract wounds at a house in Providence District near Homewood Technical High School on Tuesday, is also disturbing. We don't know the circumstances. A lot of speculations are going around. Speculations are rough and people are just not sure, but again, it came down to two lives being lost, he said. Police believe Palmer's alleged criminal lifestyle was a factor in his demise and the killing of his mother. Investigators theorize that the two were killed on New Year's Eve. Residents told reporters that they became concerned after multiple attempts to contact Ro and Palmer were unsuccessful. A police source said shortly after 11 a.m., a relative went to the house in Providence and found the bodies. Reporters were told that Ro, who worked at a bar in the corporate era, was visiting her son at the time of the incident. Green is encouraging citizens to remain on the right path. The guy Palmer was wanted by the police. Again, people are speculating around that too. They said the mother might have been at the wrong place at the wrong time, but the fact is, two lives were taken, he said. We have to find ways in which we can stop it. I want to encourage people to get involved in the right things. Walk away from the wrong things in life. Learn from the experiences of others. Others have fallen along the way, he said. Green added that parents should inform the authorities about illegal activities their children are involved in. Parents, if you are aware of your children being involved in anything that is unbecoming, report them as well. It might be difficult for you to do so, but for your sake and for their sake and the sake of others, report them and get help for them. If we don't, we will regret the outcome in the end, he said. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell.